With the coronavirus keeping us in lockdown, we don't know what the future holds in store for us. Romans 12 verse 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. As we all go through this time of uncertainty, may you all stay safe, may you all stay healthy, and may the Most High bless you all. April 29th, 2017 serves as a springboard for boxing history as two eras were on a collision course. Anthony Joshua, the new rising star in the heavyweight division versus Vladimir Dr. Stilhammer Klitschko, who represented the old guard. Together with his older brother Vitaly, Vladimir ruled the heavyweight division for more than a decade, which was widely regarded as the dark ages for heavyweight boxing. That reign ended when Tyson Fury outpointed Vladimir Klitschko in November of 2015. Numerous events outside of the ring kept Fury away from boxing and unable to defend his newly won titles. After the Fury rematch fell through, Klitschko remained inactive and would not fight for all of 2016 himself. Heavyweight boxing was entering a new era and amongst this transition emerged Anthony Joshua, who after capturing Olympic gold at the London Games in 2012, became the IBF world champion about four years later, with AJ being only the second British male boxer to win both a gold medal and a professional world title for Britain. After back-to-back -back stoppages in 2016 against unbeaten Dominic Brazil and Eric Molina, Joshua looked to challenge former world unified champion Vladimir Klitschko, who AJ had sparred 20 rounds with in years gone by. Do you want to see fight AJ against WK? I don't hear you. You got it. Fight fans would struggle to get any juicy sound bites during the buildup, as both protagonists showed great respect for each other. The matchup was intriguing nonetheless the venue fitting. Even though his amateur career was short-lived with under 50 fights, AJ fought a high level of competition as an amateur, coming in second place at the 2011 World Amateur Championships and winning Olympic gold a year later. And so even though this was a step up, the Klitschko fight wasn't Joshua's first barbecue. And although the stakes were high, the IBF World Heavyweight Champion was ready to make an impact on the highest of levels in the sport of boxing. And even though it's such an amazing event, I always try to strip everything back down to reality and what it really is and just focus on it's just me and a man coming to blows and the best man will win. And April 29th is just another stepping stone towards greatness. The boxing world still raised questions. How would the newly crowned champion fare against someone as experienced and crafty as Vladimir Klitschko? Could Joshua take a punch? How is his gas tank? Up until then, AJ had gone as far as the seventh round in a domestic war with rival Dillian White, where AJ got hurt and showed some deficiencies. Nevertheless, Joshua passed his early test and went on to improve his record to 15-0 with 15 KOs before stopping IBF champion Charles Martin in two rounds, who at the time was undefeated, yet untested. Joshua won his first world title in just 16 professional fights, which is a historical feat. The opposing corner featured an old champion who was still around to prove a point to himself. His last outing saw Vladimir Klitschko, who was gun-shy and soundly outpointed against the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. Dr. Steelhammer was determined to bounce back from that loss, and during the final press conference, he showed signs of that determination. I feel young, hungry, humble, and totally obsessed with idea and my goal to raise my hands again as the winner of my upcoming fight. Yet there were some unanswered questions for the former champion as well, whose fighting heart was always in doubt by many hardcore boxing fans. What would the 17-month layoff do for Klitschko? And how much does the 41-year-old Klitschko have left? A 90,000-seated Wembley Stadium set the bar for a historic night as heavyweight boxing hadn't seen an event of this magnitude for years. The then WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder was part of the Sky commentating team and was almost at a loss for words. Oh my God, I, I, haven't seen nothing, I, I never seen nothing like this before, man. My, my, my boys is oozing with excitement. This is amazing right here. That excitement would translate to the actual fight. 
The first opening rounds were tactical but showed great potential. Joshua seemed unfazed by the magnitude of the event, showed tactical skill, and took some of Klitschko's shots flush. Whereas Klitschko looked very loose, showcasing good footwork and almost uncharacteristically willing to engage. The cage affair came to a halt at the start of round five, where the champion decided to press the action. After a few good shots at the beginning of the round, Joshua landed a left hook. And after a barrage of punches, the old champion went down for the first time in a long time. He's in danger of falling apart. There's so much time in the round. Surprisingly, after that knockdown, AJ slowed down and it became apparent that he had punched himself out, which allowed Klitschko right back in. By the end of the round, AJ was eating heavy shots and if it wasn't for the knockdown, this would have easily been scored a Klitschko round. Beginning of round six, AJ still was visibly hurt. And in the first clinch with Klitschko, he spit out his mouthpiece, a veteran move by the young world champion. Klitschko landed his signature right, and AJ was forced to get up off the floor for the first time in his professional career, to which AJ got up and finished the round. AJ's shot output in the 7th, 8th, and 9th round dropped significantly as it was clear AJ was still recovering. This let you know that age is nothing but a number. Looking back, one begs the question why Klitschko didn't press the action to finish off Anthony Joshua. In round 10, AJ seemed to have caught his second wind as he came out with ambition, with him being able to even absorb a few of Klitschko's rights in the process. Oh, then round 11 saw Joshua come out aggressively. First, AJ connected with a right uppercut to shortly after knock down Klitschko for the second time in the fight. Then about 30 seconds later, AJ knocks down Klitschko yet again. And with less than 40 seconds to go, Anthony Joshua stops Klitschko by 11th round TKO. Vladimir Klitschko was stopped for the first time in 13 years. And the fierce battle of the eras saw Anthony Joshua topple the great Vladimir Klitschko, who, despite his second consecutive loss, received some well-deserved reaction from the London crowd. London! I think you've made a few friends. Through the course of his career, Vladimir Klitschko had been praised for his technical boxing ability. And on April 29, 2017, he also showed his champion's heart and a fighting spirit, a point the 41-year-old proved to the fighting world and most importantly to himself. As for Anthony Joshua, he would go on to defeat fellow champion Joseph Parker one year later to become the unified IBF, WBA and WBO World Heavyweight Champion, making AJ one of the faces of boxing in the post-Klitschko era. Joshua versus Klitschko proved to be a passing of the torch type of fight that delivered knockdowns, drama, and adding to the legacy of both warriors. AJ and Klitschko conducted themselves with respect for one another, and they conducted themselves as champions before and after the fight. A year later, still strong. Still strong. They proved that fighters don't need to sell controversy per se to make for a big event or spectacular fight. This was there, everything was set up. The only thing is, I haven't seen that uppercut. Beyond punching range, I finished my career on, on your my feet. feet. Yep. Most importantly, I knew I'm passing the torch yeah. to the younger, better, stronger man. AJ and Klitschko also proved they helped reinstall the heavyweight division as the glamour division of boxing yet again. I want to thank you for voting in the poll. This was episode two of the Great Wars in Boxing series that I really enjoyed putting together for you guys. What other great war in boxing history would you like to see next? Share your ideas in the comment section below and check out the poll on the Ringside Stories YouTube community page and I will gladly be inspired by your requests. Feel free to like and share today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you enjoy the content. This is Boxing's Objective Observer with Ringside Stories. Thanks for watching and have a legendary Day.